Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. In a world where everyone says hello, they dare to say, yeah, yeah good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yes. Good day. Yeah. 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 Yeah, good day. Wow, yeah, yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day, Tim. Yeah, good day, Leon. Yeah, good day, everyone. Yeah, good day, everyone. Good morning, Australia. Welcome to episode uh, ninety-eight of Yeah, good day. It's definitely the morning here. It's not the same night as we recorded the last one. It's a different day, different day, different day. Different yes, day. and good evening to the other places in the world. Uh, because Time's you up. have a different time to us. We're upside down on the flat earth. Yeah. The year is 1990 here. Um, it pretty much is. At the In moment. some places, yeah. Well, I've just got a Digimon and I'm playing with tech decks. I think it's 19... Well, it's actually early 2000s. Early 2000s, yeah. Um, Tim, we're drawing closer to the close. The closer, and yep. if you listen, you'll hear the sound of no one caring. <laughs> oh, and if, if anyone was going to laugh at that joke, you know what it'd be? What? It'd be a kookaburra that's laughing because they laugh and that's the sound. <laughs> what a great transition I made. Pretty good segue. Probably a little too early. Yeah, I was going to say, say, usually a bit of fodder. This is why you well, never, usually, usually yeah. this is why, see people, this is why we're breaking up. I Tim's prob- trying to take control. I probably should have left that, <laughs> let that go a little no, bit no, longer. No, no, let's just, okay. um, no. But I saw talk. an opening and I threw a no. kookaburra at it. Yeah, you would. Yeah. You bloody would. How, what are talking about today? How, how, about. how are you anyway? Oh, me, yeah. me, oh, me. Oh, no, I'm fine. Yeah, how are you? No, New Zealand was good. Thank you. No, no how are you? <laughs> oh, a better question is, where am I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and who are you? <laughs> oh, hello. And what year is it? No, 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 no. Now, would you like to speak briefly about New Zealand as a nation and as an experience? <laughs> as a nation. Let me tell you about New Zealand. Um, at this point, it was like two weeks ago. Yeah. That I was there. It's great. So, you've Love had it. some good time to reflect. Oh, yeah. Land of the long white cloud. And that cloud is long and white. It's as, it's as long as it is lengthy. Mm. Long as it is long. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Um, no, let's talk about the kookaburra, Tim. Okay, let's jump straight no, in. The vibe's gone. Seems too early, no, but we'll jump straight no, well, in. If you, if you didn't want it to seem this early, you shouldn't have bloody done it this early. Well, kookaburras, they are a terrestrial tree... Kingfisher. They're part of the Kingfisher family. They are. And I'm sure we all know a lot about the Kingfisher family, so I won't explain too much about that. They're the king of fishing. Uh, they are native to Australia and to New Guinea. The Kingfishers. Kookaburras themselves, there's a couple of different types, uh, so that's good. They grow between 28 and 42 centimetres in length. That's 11 to 17 inches, which when you it's say it in inches seems pretty big, yeah. I mean, 28 I mean, centimetres, centimetres is big. That's nearly the size of a 30 centimetre ruler. 42 centimetres. That's 42. bigger than a 30 centimetre ruler. <laughs> since when a kookaburra is that big? Um, since, I guess, forever. Is that from claw to mohawk or is I that think from it's tail to tit? F- from tail to beak. <laughs> to beak? To beak tit, yeah. That's a weird way to measure it. Well, they say length. Oh. Not I'm thinking height. Yeah. No. But we're talking like... Why would a tail be involved in its height? Because, like, if you if a kookaburra puts its head on the right angle and tilts it up and its tail is a bit down, then you've got a very long bird. Yes, and you would measure that as length, <laughs> not height. So you've, just, not, you've argued you. from my point of view, but, but thank you. But what's its width, Tim? What's uh, its diameter? Anyway, the name the is a loan word from the Wiradjuri uh, nation. Okay. It's the actual word they use is gugubara, okay. um, which is an onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeic, onomatopoeic, on, onomatopoeic uh, of its call. Um, it has a very loud, distinctive call, which we've all heard. Like, I mean, like, Tim and I going to do it right now. Well, <laughs> <laughs> now that's a monkey. Jesus Christ! Um, we'll... <laughs> <laughs> Why can I suddenly not do it? <laughs> I'm that's closer. You that's the one. That- if you asked me 10 minutes ago, I would have probably given you the best cook of our yeah. own. Now I can't. That's pretty good. Yeah. Now yeah. we're getting there. Uh, our neighbours are like, what time is it? I've got to get up for work. Yeah. It's used as, largely used as a stock sound effect, which is a fun fact that's for some reason in this article. Uh, stock sound effect? For, for what? Oh, for this In older movies. 
Uh, so they're found in all sorts of habitats, ranging from humid forest to arid savanna, um, as well as in suburban areas with tall trees forest. or near running water. Uh, or power lines. They are lines. related to the kingfishers, but not actually closely associated with them. Because we all know, as, as we are all very aware about kingfishers, they mm. are very closely associated with water. Um, I'm sure I didn't need to explain that. To no, obviously people, not. Since we all have it's such in the name, people. It's a the wonderful box. understanding. Uh, so there's four species of kookaburra that can be found in Australia, New Guinea, and the Aru Islands. If you ask me where the Aru Islands are, I would not be able to tell you. Do you where the Aru Islands? Well, they're actually a group of 95 low-lying <laughs> islands in the Maluku province of eastern Indonesia. Tim, where's eastern Indonesia? <laughs> in the east of Indonesia. <laughs> where's the west? Yeah. Kookaburra is a sexually dimorphic. Oh, hello. Um, what does that mean? Do you that remember? Means We've said that a lot on this show and I can't there remember. There are two sexes of the same species exhibit uh, different characteristics yes. beyond the differences of their sexual organs. Kookaburra females are Doing from a lot Venus and kookaburra quick males are from today. Mars. Yeah. Uh, noticeable in the blue-winged and rufous r- Rufius R-U-F-O-U-S Ruf- Rufus Rufy Rufy de belly ruff, ruff. <laughs> Where males uh, Blue tails and females Have reddish brown tails So um, Rufus belly kookaburra Yes Is in lowland New Guinea I'm not going to read all we this We don't out. need New Guinea We need Spangled Australia Spangled kookaburra too. Blue winged kookaburra. The most common one, though, seems to be the laughing kookaburra. Um, <laughs> native to eastern Australia, introduced to the southwest. Unusually for close relatives, the laughing and blue winged species are direct competitors in the area where their ranges now Fight. overlap. They do not like each other. Uh, this suggests that these two species evolved in isolation, possibly during a period where Australia and New Guinea were more distant. So they are the same of the same genus. They come from the same place. But they, don't, they don't know each other that well, so they like to fight. No. I don't know if they It's your cousin fight. who has the same family name, but you never met them because they live out in this country. Yeah. And they're weird. Uh, oh, they're very weird. Yeah. They laugh constantly. Constantly laughing. Kookaburra is mo- almost exclusively carnivorous. They eat mice, snakes, insects, small reptiles, and the young of other birds, which is pretty fucked up, actually. Have you ever seen a kookaburra <laughs> eating a snake? I have seen them attack a small, like a green tree snake, but I've it's never seen them hectic. try to eat it. Yeah, it's so pretty... So, like, because a kookaburra, being 42 centimetres long, um, it's not huge. Snakes are usually quite long. They're about six foot. Yeah. Two metres. Um, and it's just dangling out of its mouth. And it's just yeah. like, yep, I'm eating this. <laughs> They're crazy. <laughs> it's crazy spaghetti. Uh, in zoos, they usually fed food for birds of prey. They are pretty social. They will accept hands out. So, it's pretty common... Um, when people see kookaburras, usually maybe you give them a little bit of meat. A little bit of sausage, I think, is the go-to. And is often. this a euphemism? Uh, yes. Because I've got to report you're feeding sausage. Kookaburras, kookaburras love human man meat. Oop, oop, oop. <coughs> you said it. You put We're it in words. back and out of that quickly. I was just suggesting. Uh, generally not advised to feed them ground beef or pet food as they do not include enough calcium and roughage. Roughage means uh, poo fodder. But if like if a if a kookaburra rocks up on your clothesline, you feed it cat food. You're gonna be like, oh shit, there was enough calcium. In yeah, <laughs> I threw it oh, its day. Looking at the can, like, oh, does this have enough calcium in it? To How give much it to zinc that is in here? <laughs> yeah. How much uh, protein do you have per day? So that's good. They are species listed as least concern, um, but they have laws of protect native I'm not birds, concerned. including kookaburras. Uh, kookaburras kind of have, you know how. Seeing an owl is a big deal. Oh, yeah. Kookaburras are in that league, yeah. I think. They're the kind of birds that everyone is very aware of. Like, magpies we see a lot. They do yeah. have, like, a mythic status in Australia because they're insane. Yeah, they But you, you see them all the time, so yeah. it's not that big a deal. When you see a kookaburra, it is a big deal. It's a photo moment. Even if you've seen them a million times before, it's definitely a big deal. Yeah, growing up in Australia, you've seen kookaburras heaps. Yeah. But when you see a kookaburra, it's like, oh, it's, it's a big deal. It's like when you see a rainbow lorikeet. Yeah. Like when they stop. Or a king parrot or something. When you see them flying over, but when they're stopped on like a fence, and you're like, oh, rainbow lorikeet. Yeah. Um, Or a rosella. But yeah, seeing a kookaburra. Seeing a kookaburra and seeing I saw two once. That was pretty good. Two kookaburras. That was pretty good. At once? Yeah, it was pretty good. Christ alive. Um, kookaburras and tawny frogmouth. That's a that's a that'd be a, that's a treat of a day. They've got a similar aesthetic, I think. Yeah, I saw a tawny the other week. Oh, nice! I was on the phone to Dad. I saw a tawny frogmouth on the. Uh, yeah, seeing an owl is a big deal, and I think seeing a kookaburra is definitely on par with that. Is a tawny frogmouth an owl? No, uh, it's not, isn't it? 
I think it's like a. It's not technically an owl, but it's kind they of. They are very kookaburra style. Kookaburras are quite cute. They're like a like a a stocky little bird. They're, as as with everything in Australia, they're a ball of muscle, <laughs> um, and they're like a little. They look very. I want to pat one. Yeah, they're nice. They look interesting looking birds. Great they're mascara. Quite territorial though, apparently. Excellent they, mascara. On very very territorial. Uh, so things about kookaburras that are well known. The laugh is probably its most distinctive feature. As well Tim known. and I have seamlessly impersonated yeah uh you hear that laugh everywhere constantly i Often hear it all the time we it's said that it they laugh before rain as well yes but i would say that it's probably one of the things where it's like oh they laugh before rain or if you hear a kookaburra like well it's gonna be a good day today it's like what, what which one does it mean pink sky in the night sailors delight pink sky in the morning sailors warning who knows you might have a good day and it's raining well i like the rain um yeah and it's it's a it's a signal for rain, but it's usually it's also like the kookaburra laugh to me is the Australian version of the cock waking people up. Yeah, when you're out in the bush, the rooster crowing. It's one of the sounds you can hear sometimes. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, they get up pretty early, the bastards. Yeah, there's a fair bit of uh, use of kookaburras in popular culture. One that I found very weird is. They're in several video games. Two of them I actually don't know. Battletoads and Lineage, this, Lineage 2. No. I don't know those. I'm sure maybe other people do. But they're people in would. World of Warcraft, apparently. Really? The Kookaburra Clan. Which is interesting. If I could play as a Kookaburra, I'd probably play World of Warcraft. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Do you play as them or are they your pets? Someone who's played World of Warcraft, let us know. Right now. Figure We're it waiting. out. Figure it out and tell us. Uh, I'll just Google it. One of the three mascots for the Sydney 2000 Olympics. We talked about this. Sid. Ol- Ollie. Ollie. Sid's the platypus. Who? What? What are you talking about? Do you even know? His name is Ollie. He's a kookaburra. Short for Oliver. Yes. Not Olympics. Oliver. That would make sense, though. Um, what else? Kookaburra world of Warcraft. No, you keep talking. You're looking it up. I'm just over All here. right. In William Arden's 1969 book, The Mystery of the Laughing Shadow, the laughing kookaburra is actually integral to the plot, apparently. I've not read it. Maybe I will. Um, it's one of the three investigator <laughs> series could. for young readers. It's a young reader one, apparently. This, um, this kookaburra character doesn't look like a kookaburra at all. Yeah? It's got some kind of helmet on. I'm very confused. Here's some fun other facts. Uh, the dolphin call in the television series Flipper... Is actually a modified kookaburra call. Oh, really? It's not even a real dolphin. Imagine, oh. imagine being that cheap that you wouldn't get it. You wouldn't bother paying for the, the sound of a dolphin. Yeah, I know. Crazy stuff. The call can also be heard at the beginning of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay. In the jungle scene, for some reason, even though I'm almost 100% certain it doesn't play, take place in Australia. Well, does it take place in New Guinea? Uh, or Indonesia? Maybe. I've never seen it. Um... What else? Uh, kick, the kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. It's a very well known something, song. Something, 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 something at me. Laugh, laugh kookaburra, kookaburra, laugh. Kookaburra, something, <laughs> something, something. Gay your life must be, is ah, the words. The um, yes. There's also, um, there's a kookaburra in uh, Old Man Emu by John Williamson. Yeah. And he goes, ma, ha, 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 in there at some point. He does, yes. Uh, Seamless John Williamson. That was a, that's actually in here. Um, the postage stamp, it has appeared on a six pence stamp, uh, which was issued in 1914. Um, a three pence commemorative Australian stamp, which is issued in 1928. Six pence stamp issued in 1932. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you all. 38 cent stamp in 1990. An international $1.70 Australian stamp in 2013. And it's well known as a silver kookaburra minted annually and since 1990. I think this is like a special coin. Weird. Yeah. It's like a silver coin that they make that I don't know anything about. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. What else? Um, the hockey. Men's hockey team is named after the Kookaburra. Um, they were world champions 2014. There's also, isn't there a brand of hockey gear that's Kookaburra? Yeah, there's an Australian sports equipment company called Kookaburra Sports. I think they do, um, I don't know if they, they probably do hockey stuff, but they do um, cricket bats as well. Yeah. Sport, sports stuff. Yeah, sports balls. Sports stuff. Sports that's sticks. um, that's that's all I've got. In Surely there's me. a kookaburra in Blinky Bill. There's always something in Blinky Bill. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Good on you, Blinky. Kookaburras are good birds. I like a good kookaburra. I like a good bird. Yeah, good bird is a good bird. 
When I was in New Zealand recently. Yeah. Saw kiwi birds. Oh. They are some of the funniest things to watch. Okay. I can't say I've ever really investigated the kiwi as a bird. They're bonkers animals. Um, but like, I like a good bird. Like whenever we get, like we went to a, um, we didn't go to the zoo whilst we were over there. We went to a wildlife sanctuary and they had like a little bird section. I just like looking at birds. Okay. And because the birds in here, some of them like you go in the sanctuary, they're just hanging out. And some of them just be on the foot, like on the path where people are walking through just eating like an apple. And it's just like, you don't care that I'm in here, do you? But you could also gouge my eyes out if you wanted. Oh yeah. They could ruin your life. They've got a bird there called a, a Kia or something like that. Mm. Um, I feel what it's called, but Elise was telling me that you've actually got to watch out because those guys will tear the uh, side mirrors off your car. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it really has got to be like, I hate side mirrors. <laughs> Who's a good boy? I am. <laughs> we need thing. to design cars without these. <laughs> they always just look in the mirror and they're like, who's that? I'll fucking kill him. <laughs> Take him out. Uh, have you ever seen pictures of that prehistoric bird that used to live in New Zealand? I can't remember what it's called, but it's terrifying. It's uh, like a kind of a cassowary, but much bigger. I would have seen one of those when I was looking at the Kiwi stuff because they were showing like the comparison between the different birds. Yeah. Um, and the cassowary was there. I can't remember what it's called, but no, they are terrifying. They are scary. Um, another good thing that happened recently, but again, at this point that you're listening to it, it's like two weeks ago. Have you seen the video lately of the uh, the cockatoo tearing off the, the bird spikes? No. You know on buildings and on like roofs and stuff where they have like yeah. those... They, it's horrible. They have like these like long thin needles Just so stop the birds them. can't land yeah. on it. There's this... Like sulfur crested cockatoo standing up there, just pulling them off and throwing them on the <laughs> ground. So it's a video of like it getting pulled off and thrown on the ground, and the person like zooms across the ground. There are like ten on the ground, it's just going on me like fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> Why I'll is sit this up here? here? I want to. Yeah. Um. But kookaburras, yeah, they're good. Yeah. They got a good beak on them. They do have a good beak. They got good colours as well. The blue's nice. The brown mascara they usually wear is quite good across. It's a the nice area. little hint of blue. They don't go yeah. all out. They haven't. No, no, no. It's not sometimes, a yeah, sometimes a bird will put blue on its feathers, and you think, Too That's, far. "Come on." Too far. This is 2019. Reel it in. <laughs> That's not. That sort of fashion is not going to hold up. That might have worked for a 1940s kookaburra, but this is 2019. A kookaburra added that little hint of blue, and it has stood the test of time. I think it'll stand the test of time to come as well. You know how people do like the cat eye and mascara, like the mm. little. Why don't they do the kookaburra eyes? <laughs> a long, thick streak yeah. that goes of back. Blue. Yeah. No, it's brown. I think on that. Brown, line. blue, blue, brown, brown. It's a poo brown. Yeah. Hey, I've got a dad voice. <laughs> <laughs> good transition. Is this the point where people listen to the show and they're like, "No, I think it's good. They're ending at a hundred. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they seem not into it." <laughs> Getting a vibe. No, 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 no. We love no. it. We love it. We love it. We do. We do no, love we do, it. Do, do, do. Uh, I'm Give just me a advice. tired, and I'd like to read this to you. I'm hungry. I'm starving, actually. That's not in here, though. I'll read this. <laughs> Dear Tim and Leon, I live and work in the city area, and so I have to take public transport a lot. I hate it. Which it city takes area? forever. It's crowded and expensive. Sorry. Which city area? Sydney. It says, <laughs> it's definitely written there. Yeah, I'm assuming. Uh, I was hoping you might have some ideas on how to make time go quicker or how to deal with gross people while traveling. Please help me, Tracy from Sydney. Mm. She's written it specifically there. Tracy from Sydney hates public transport, has to ride public transport. Has to. How to make the public transportation better. Better. Yep. You can't. Um, no. You can't. <laughs> Sorry, bad news. That's as good as it gets. What, no, what you want to do is you want to drive to work for a week. Mm-hmm. And once you've done that, you'll probably realize that public transport is a much better option and then you'll be happy. Oh, okay. It's all about uh, perspective. Because yeah. driving into Sydney It's all about appreciating what you have, horrific. Tracy. Um, podcasts are a good one. Not this one. We're ending soon. So, mm. don't. I'll go back and listen to the backlog. Like, well, don't go too far back. <laughs> there are certain points that we're not super proud of. Tim went through a very interesting phase. Yeah. Uh, where he, he was very strung up on a certain... Uh, Antarctic penguin. Yeah, the penguin in general. But the Antarctic one. Yeah. Um, and he said a lot of bad things about them. No, um, podcasts are definitely the way of public transport. If you can read on public transport, that's life-changing. It is. Sometimes I get travel sick. So I read. Not life-changing. On public transport. Tim reads picture books. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> see spot run. They're very, very big and I open them up so everyone can see me reading them. <laughs> that would them. actually be a very funny thing to see someone of like your This is a great on, skit, actually. I'm not going to say it on, on the thing because I actually genuinely might want to use this. Okay. Uh, Redacted. Yeah. 
don't take what picture books not on public not, transport no 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 um but that would be funny or get scrolls <laughs> read an ancient read the rosetta stone yeah um what else can you do you can uh count the amount of left-handed people on there it's hard to do when they're not writing anything down yeah just <laughs> scream <laughs> is anyone on here left-handed hi why <laughs> <laughs> listen here yeah. uh, look at me look <laughs> Oh. Become the screaming person. Yeah. Be the, be, talk loudly on your phone. That's a good one. That'll pass the time for you, not yeah. for the people on the train no. with you, though. Uh, if you ever want to slow one down, a sip is like a crazy person because I guarantee you'll never have a slower trip than that trip. Just there's there's no way to save yourself from the monotony that is public transport. <sighs> Unfortunately, no. Um, That's why I drive myself to work. Ah, that's good. I can't. I don't like. I don't mind public tram. I don't mind trams, mm. and um, buses can be okay. But for some reason, trains shit me off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bloody sick it. of these trains. I will tell you that. I much. think it's because the last couple of times Elise and I have gone to the city, when we get on a train, we always get stuck with the AFL traffic as well. Uh, yeah. But if you get on the train at the wrong spot, you have to do the city loop before you come back around to then go through Richmond. Yeah, it's the like, city why do I have to go joke. through the entire city loop when I'm already... We're, like, we're close enough to where we need to be, people. Um, I think last time we learned that if you get on it, uh, Parliament or something, you miss the city loop when you can just zip out of the city. That's correct, yes. Um, but yeah, so do that. Um, Jacinta, whatever, what was Tracy her name? from Sydney. Tracy from Melbourne. Jacinta from Uruguay. Who knows? Yeah. Who gives a... Sh- um, no, that's good. Tim, uh, it really feels like we should end that one there. Um, I would like to thank Taylor Smell, uh, T Smell, Smelly T for our wonderful, get it, wait for it, cover up. And Curtis Fernance from uh, Fern Tree Music. Intro- <laughs> <off>. Introduction, <laughs> introduction. No thanks to you, mate. No, fuck off. No, thank you. You've done a great deal of um, things for us and the music's fantastic. I didn't, wasn't saying fuck off to him. It sounded like you paused on the Oh, you said you fuck were, off to me. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just saying general. No, it sounded like you were going to say Curtis Fernandes from fuck off. <laughs> but you were going to say Fern Tree Music. Ah, Fern Tree Music, yes. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's, um, that's two episodes to go. Mm. We're going to pull out all the stops. Yeah. Can't pull a rabbit out of a hat, but I can pull a hair out of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> this is the kind of quality you're going to get in the last two episodes. I love that joke. I think it's it is good, one. actually. I've never heard that, but I do like it. I think it's now is the appropriate time for me to share my New Zealand joke that no one thinks is funny. Um, what, how do you say hello to a whale in New Zealand? Kiorka. And I say the same thing I told you at the time. Is an orca a Pokemon? Why would it say its own name? Anyway, let's wrap no, it up. No, you're saying hello to it. <laughs> yeah. Is key mean hello? I don't know. Kiora means hello. Uh that's why it's funny. Because it's Kiora. Yeah, and I've no, said Kiorka. I, I, get the, I get the principle. A killer whale is called an orca. <laughs> what you've got to understand. <laughs> what you need to understand about the English language is... Have you seen Blackfish? <laughs> yes. That's not a funny movie. <laughs> oh, but it deals with orcas. Tilcom Have you seen people. Free Willy? Yes. Great movie. It's a shame when he crushes Actually, the kid at the end. Not that good a movie. What is that? But a good guy? in its context. Where they do the scene where Free Willy jumps over and he doesn't make it and so he crushes the child. Uh, I don't know. Um, wasn't it you that we got a uh, notification one time for acquiring Blackfish? Possibly. From the interwebs? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't download it, but I did. TVG weren't happy <laughs> in that shit yeah. house. Imagine downloading a documentary. <laughs> How dare I? Blackfish is good, though. Yeah. Um, that's Anyway, pulling hairs out of asses. Um, yeah. Hairy that's, ass. That's where it's at. Well, I'll, I'll, while we're on it, I'll share Dad's joke Okay. to end the show. Yep. Uh, I bought a new pen the other day that can write underwater. Oh, yeah. And other words. <laughs> <laughs> that is a Tony joke. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. But this is the issue that I told people about is that, as you may not know, but I went through a massive phase of trying to find the right pen to take on the trip with me. I went looking at all the pens. They're all hundreds of dollars of that. I eventually bought a Fisher Space Pen for like 40 bucks. They can write underwater and in space and all that. So when Dad said it, I went, oh, which one? Because I've got, I was going to be like, oh, we can bond over pens. And he was like, in other words, and I was like, yep, no, fuck me. That's fine. <laughs> it's a good joke. Screw my interests. Good joke. Uh, as always, yeah, g'day, Tim. Yeah, g'day, Leon. Yeah, g'day, everyone. Yeah, g'day, everyone. Catch you on the flippity flop. Look. 
Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.